Richard Dreyfuss is with us, and we're talking about working in film, theater, Broadway, off-Broadway. And you know, Richard, there, there's something unique. We all have to go to high school, and we all go through school, and we go to the movies, and we have dreams. But unlike most people, you went to Beverly Hills High. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, since you are a guy who has said, I always wanted to be an actor, what about life at Beverly Hills High? I mean, who went to school, and what did you do? And were, were, were a lot of the kids show business kids? Well, a few. I went to school with uh, Rob Reiner, uh, Larry Bishop, Joey Bishop's son. Um, are you aware, are you familiar with the comic Albert Brooks? Albert Brooks? Yeah. No, I'm not. He's, he's gaining a very good reputation down in the States right now. And uh, I went to school with him. And uh, I guess there were others. Oh, the Marine Corps Commandant, Shoop. His daughter <laughs> went to school with her. Um, but on the whole, it was just a high school. I mean, it was really, it was nothing outrageous about it. Let's talk about the community of California. I mean, you know, we, we know how, and you have talked about how young actors, when they're working and struggling, when you were doing things like In Mama's House and working <laughs> at the Mark Taper Forum and, yeah. and all the things like Incident at Vichy. And pl what did you play in Incident at Vichy? I played the boy, did the you? young boy. It's interesting. Did you, did you see That was the best, I think that was the best production of that play ever done. Really? I really do. Who it's, directed it? Uh, a, a guy by the name of Guy Stockwell. It was a local Los oh, Angeles. I know him. I Not know Guy him. Stockwell, excuse me. Guy Stockwell's partner, Rudy Solari. Oh, yes. Um, they had a company in L.A. And uh, I had seen the production that Harold Clerman directed with Joseph Weissman. And David Wayne. And uh, David Wayne was not in it when I saw it. It was with uh, Jean-Pierre Aumont. And I was very disappointed in it, although I liked the individual acting of Michael Strong and people like that. Rudy, who is a very good director, gave the actors, John Daner, do you know John Daner, yes, the actor? He was in it. Booth Coleman was in it. Actors that you see on television all the time. Guys that make a living in television and film, and they do theater in L.A. just because they like to do theater. Well, Rudy said, at a certain point in this production, the door that you go in, the interrogation room, is the oven itself. Well, that... That did such a thing to that company that instead of it just being a door to go in, that you just treat it like the oven, the gas chamber oven. Well, it was the first exciting production of that play that I was aware of. And I saw the one that Stacy Keach directed, and it didn't have it. It didn't have the argument, that moral argument that Miller poses in the play w was an argument. But in our production, it came out of that desperate need to explain and get the hell out of that room. And it really made it work. I was really proud. I had a small role, but I was really proud of that production. That was something. Did you ever meet a Canadian actress who's doing a lot of, of academic theater in California, Diana Maddox? Oh, my God. Do you know Diana? I've never met Diana, but you cannot be in L.A. and talk about Shakespeare without, t without someone saying, well, you've got to study with Diana Maddox. For the last three weeks, as a matter of fact, in L.A., I have been asking my friends, the different friends I have, uh, who should I study with? And everyone says Diana Maddox. That's, that's their response. And she's going down to direct in San Diego this summer. And uh, when, as soon as she gets back, I want to join her company. You know, Diana did the original production of Under Milkwood with Richard Burton, directed by Dylan Thomas, years ago. And she did a lot of work at Stratford, Canada, before she ever went to California. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Richard Dreyfus, film, theater, and other recollections. Richard Dreyfuss is with us, and we're talking about California and movie making and acting. Richard, what about the community? I, I started to bring up the thing about young actors sitting in a bar or having a cup of coffee and talking about the future. Were you one of those? Yes, all the time. What did you do? Well, you, I guess you, I wanted to be an actor from the time I was an infant, and I, I uh, gravitated toward those young guys who were doing the same thing, that wanted the same thing. And, we used to sit around in coffee shops all over the city and just fantasize all the time. I mean, we fantasized about what we would say to Johnny Carson and Dick Cavett. And, and I, th I once gave a fantasy that took an hour and a half to tell. I told Rob Reiner and a couple of other friends of mine about my production of Hamlet at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles that takes me six months to put together and how Laurence Olivier flies in to see it and I get a Time Magazine cover story and I'm talking about how unique my production of Hamlet is. And finally, Rob jumped up and said, Rick, it can't be that good. It can't be. 
like that. So you're a neurotic and <laughs> go to a psychiatrist. <laughs> because I believed it, man. I was, I was, I was telling him incidents that happened in, in the rehearsal. And the thing has not yet happened. Is it going to? Yes. You want to do it in Canada? Why don't you do it at Stratford, Canada? I'll do it. Just get me the gig and I'll do it. As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I came up to do this tour for Duddy Kravitz was to figure out some way to let people know in Canada that I want to work in the theater here. What do you know about Canadian theater? I mean, why, why would you like to be involved in something? Do you have a background? Do you know what it's, what's happening here? Well, I've, I know generally. I know about Stratford. I went, I've done a lot of work. I've done work with actors who've worked up here and who think very highly of the fact that there is a, a, a theater here with interest. I'm, I live in a town where there is no theater interest. And so I, my theater is either makeshift or I go out to New York. You know, I make it up on my own. Um, and I want to do classic theater. I don't want to be a British actor. I don't want to be a Canadian actor. I have a specific way I want to do Hamlet. But I want to do it in an atmosphere that is conducive to doing classical theater. Are you aware, Richard, of in, in, when you're in California, of the Canadians who are there, like Norman Jewison, Arthur Hiller, Norman Campbell, Lloyd Bachner, Geneviève Bougeau? Sure. Are, is there a sense of a Canadian community in the film industry? No. As a matter of fact, one of my best friends, Scott Hyland, is a Canadian, and uh, I didn't know he was a Canadian for a long time. They've, they've assimilated into the culture. <laughs> oh, have they? <laughs> sure. Are and, actors generous toward each other? When, a few years ago, when you were struggling. Yeah. You talk about Rob Reiner or, or Scott Highlands, whomever you want to mention. Is there a generosity from one actor toward another? If you know you're yes, wrong for the role, will you help your friend get it? Yes. Yes. And, and that's taken for granted. But then why the cliches about the toughness of acting and the kind of single-minded, ambitious goal? Because people, the kind of people who talk about that are not actors. And they're not in the community. And they get a very kind of uh, tinsel town crap lying dishonest view because they don't know what it's like and they just make it up if you read F Scott Fitzgerald you do not get a true opinion of what ha what goes on in, ho in Hollywood you don't I mean I don't know any of those people that do a Bel Air circuit thing and try to think uh, and think that playing tennis will make them a star I don't know any of those people I know actors who like to act who want to act and be brilliant that's who I know I don't know any ugly people I mean, I, there may be one or two under the carpet, but I don't know them. And <laughs> I just think that there's a bad opinion of actors. The, it's, a, it's a throwback to actors uh, are, you know, vagrants and children and no actors need apply at this tavern. I think it's a throwback to that. Let's talk about, about current movies and, and this whole... That makes me angry, too. It, really? People have a terrible opinion of actors and... They're wrong. But that's changing, isn't it? I mean, hasn't the actor, isn't the actor taking on a new respectability in the 70s? I think actors are considered children. I really do. I think that, that there's, there's something cute about the art form to most people. They don't understand the art form. Even actors that I know, a lot of actors don't understand the art form. They don't understand why it's an art. They're ashamed of calling themselves artists. If you're a painter or a musician, you're not ashamed of calling yourself an artist. And yet an actor will say, I'm an actor, I'm not an artist. And it is an art form, and it's the oldest art form there ever was. It's the oldest. There is none older. Yes, but then maybe that, that, whole, that whole cliche of actors being children who never grew up goes back to the beginnings of drama. I mean, if, if a man was a court jester to a king, he was an actor. And there's this feeling that actors have always been second-class citizens because they've always been people who, who became alive at night. Anything that came alive at night and well, slept through the supposed working hours, there must be some... It's that and also we, our, our sense of what is cool and what is proper is self-contained and very repressed. And an actor whose instrument is his own emotions, his instrument is to exhibit his emotions and to free and to, and to express all those things that everyone else is uptight about. Ted Kotcheff, who is a fine director, said that it would be embarrassing for him to be an actor. He could never be an actor. He's, that's why he's a director. He could never get in front of a camera or on stage and expose his emotions. That's why people think it's childish, because but children do that. actors perpetrate this, Richard. When you get a man like Paul Newman, Jack Lemmon, uh, Warren Beatty, when you get stars who say, 
I've done it. I, I want to get behind the camera. I always wanted to be a director. There are many actors. I mean, a good example recently was Richard Benjamin. When a guy comes out and says, as many actors have said, without critics saying it for them, that acting is not a fit profession for, for a mature a man. Yeah. Well, who's, who's putting down whom? Well, I think that, I think that we, we suffer. Actors who say that suffer from the guilt that is given to them by other people. I mean, I know Dustin Hoffman once said that acting, he thought, was basically a womanish profession. profession. Now, he didn't mean it in a sexist way, but he meant that, it is a per that an actor is always done to, is dealt with, and, and is, uh, is exposing himself. And the entire thrust of society is to hide those emotions and to kind of not be done to. So there are actors walking around with incredible guilt complexes about being actors. Now, it's strange. It's strange because there is at the basis of it such a communal art, such a, uh, no one is ashamed to go to the theater. They're just ashamed to get on stage. No one is ashamed to feel the catharsis that an actor will give them. They're just ashamed of being that actor that does it for them. It's a thing that I don't have yet. Maybe I'll develop that shame. I don't, but I don't have it now. Why are you acting? I love it. I love it. What, what, do you get, what do you get out of creating a human being, a character other than Richard Dreyfuss? What, what happens to you? How do you come down? Or do you? Well, I, I, I don't know how. I do. I don't know how. See, let me tell you something. Acting, all art is ego. All of it. It's all ego. An artist, whatever art he's in, says, my view of the world, my perspective is so unique that I'm going to show it to you. A painter, a musician, a dancer says, I'm going to show you how I see it, and you're going to look at the way I see it. That's what all art is. And the reason that we view art is that we need that common denominator because we're so isolated and we're so many islands running around separate from one another that we need one common view. We need to look at something from someone else's point of view. Now, the reason we go to the theater in, in our gut is not only for that Greek tragedy catharsis, but also to say to, to, say to ourselves unconsciously, he says, um, like I say, um. He cries like I cry. Someone else does that like me. I'm not alone, all right? Now, that's why I'm an actor. I get an emotional get-off when I say, I did that just the way I really do it. I acted that just the way I really do it. I used to think, I used to get off falsely on my anger. I used to say, wow, I have great anger as an actor. The other day, recently in an acting class, I realized what real anger was and how polite my anger had been. And now I can't wait to get angry. In a, in a part. I can't wait to do it because I realized what it was, that I had been kind of being polite about my anger and kind of being sexy or trying to be sexy. But real anger is so naked and, and, and embarrassing and strange. And to really do that, I mean, I guess it's like Van Gogh who's, or, or, or a painter who says, I really know how to paint that thing or I really know how to put that music down. An actor has the right to say, I really know how to do this. I really know how to show you, you. I'm going to show you how you make love. I'm going to show you how you say yes or no, or hello, or I don't know, or hesitate, or fear, or express joy. All those words that we're embarrassed to say, that's what an actor does. And he has every right to be proud of it. Now, not, most of the actors I know are not proud of it. They're just kind of saying, well, yeah, I'm an artist, but I wish another art had chosen me. Right. <laughs> Rather than saying, also, there's another thing. If I have time to say this. Richard, we'll take a break. We'll come right back, okay? okay. Richard Dreyfus, we'll Going be crazy. right back. <laughs> I don't know if Richard Dreyfus has been able to hold on to the thought, but yes, we were I talking have. about acting. Yes. And go on, Richard. Well, there's one thing I wanted to say, and that's something I've never heard before, is uh, there, there, there was an argument um, between Aristotle and uh, Plato. I think, as to which were the, uh, what was the, um, 
which are the most important art forms? And one, one of them said music is first and, and uh, writing is second and painting is third. And the other one said, no, 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 painting is first and music is third. And theater was way down on the list, way down. Well, one night I was in this cafe and this girl was saying this an idiot line to me about um, how, oh yes, she admits she's an artist because she's an actress, but she wished that another art form had chosen her. And I said, why? And she said, well, acting, acting. And I said, do you know, there is not another art form that hits you harder. Now, certain art forms, each one affects you in a certain way. And certain art forms will last longer and give you a more intricate or a more lasting or even a more de uh, deep feeling, emotional response, which is what all art is. But no art form hits you harder, faster, quicker, and deeper than acting. You cannot burst into tears like that listening to any piece of music. It's impossible. You can get into that music and really get into it and then burst into tears. And you can really think, wow, Nuria, far. But no art form will give you that response except acting. That's, what the, that's why we're act. That's why there is acting. That's why we're here. Each art form affects you in a different way, and the one that acting does is to do that. No other art form does it. That's its milieu, or that's its, its forte, its territory. And that's why there are actors. Tell me some of the experiences in acting that you've observed as part of an audience that have done that for you. I had one incredible one as a member of an audience. I used to talk about acting all the time, very pompously. This one was a great actor, that one was a great actor. And one day I, I, was, I, I met and started to talk about acting with Tony Randall. And I was giving him all my pronouncements. And at one point he said to me, hey, wait a minute. He said, you ever seen theater? Have you ever really been to see the great actors in the theater? And I said, no, I'm talking about films. He said, well, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And I didn't know whether he was telling me the truth or not. And then I went to see The Great White Hope in New York. I was sitting in the first row. I don't like the play. I didn't like the direction. But in two scenes, Jane Alexander and James Earl Jones got to me so badly, so deeply, that I, I was not only crying, I was snotting gracelessly down my face. I was beyond hope. And when that play ended, I was crying so badly that when he came out, when they came out for the curtain call, I leaped into the air. <laughs> I was wearing my little bar mitzvah suit. I was on a trip to New York to see the theater, and all of a sudden I was shaken to my core. It was unbelievable how deeply he affected me. He was brilliant. Br I mean, well, Marlon Brando in Reflections in a Golden Eye, or almost anything that Marlon Brando has ever done. There's a moment in Merchant of Venice that Laurence Olivier has that, oh my God, when, he, when you see after his daughter has split. Oh, oh. Did you tell James Earl Jones what he had done to you, for you? No, I never met him, but I did meet Jane Alexander and I told her. I did a play with her and I told her. What about contemporaries, Richard? You know, we're, we're talking about, you mentioned names like Timothy Bottoms or I mentioned James Bobby Conner. De Niro. Bobby De Niro. I hate to say this because I have an enormous ego and I always wanted from the time I was nine to be the best actor in America, but Bobby De Niro was the best actor in my generation. He is the best. I've seen him in one performance, and it's something I can't do, and he is brilliant. I don't know him. I think I met him once, but he's, phew, he was brilliant. What about women? Are there, are there young American women who impress you? Yeah, none eyes? of them are known now. A couple, I know. Tell me some of them. Well, there's a, a girl named Chris Mursky. Uh, there's a girl named Dorothy Fielding, Lisa James, Susan Hubley, who is acting. Uh, those are the ones that I... What about the stars? I mean, Richard Dreyfuss going to the movies. You're a kid. You're going to see movies. Yeah. Something, something, you know, it's a cumulative collective thing. But something was going on when you were a very, very young kid, and you knew you were going to do that when you right. became a big boy. I mean, what, what happened? Who were the stars? What are the films that go through your head when you Spencer think of Spencer Tracy in State of the Union, and Spencer Tracy in everything. Uh, the films of Frank Capra. Uh... Donald Meek, terrific. Henry Fonda in Failsafe, oh, what a performance that is. One of the great unsung performances. Let's talk about Henry Fonda. Here's a man who spends three months <laughs> on the road with Henry Fonda in yeah. Time of Your Life. Yeah. Tell me about Henry Fonda and Richard Dreyfuss together. Total strangers. <laughs> I For was, three months? I was so shy and so awed <laughs> by being with him that I never spoke to him at all. And one night I'm talking at a party about Spencer Tracy and his wife, Fonda's wife walked over and said, you never talk about Henry that way. And I said, I'm too embarrassed because I love your husband so much. Not in everything, but in a couple of performances. There is a moment in Failsafe that you just, 
You can't believe it. The subtlety of it is unbelievable. My, re my respect for film acting went way up after I started doing films. I mean, there are moments that George Scott has in The Hustler, or Brando in On the Waterfront, or Reflections, or Mutiny on the Bounty, or The Ugly American, or half a dozen others, that you just, <gasps> you can't believe it. Jimmy Cagney, you won't appreciate Jimmy Cagney and Yankee Doodle Dandy until you see George M. Cohan. When you see one of the films that Cohan did and then see Yankee Doodle Dandy, you go, oh my God, that is George M. Cohan. It's unbelievable. I'm telling you, man, you'll go crazy. There are a lot of those performances. Did you find yourself, when you, when you got to films, and you know, I, I know it's a running gag with you. you, you made a joke about trying to buy up the prints of, of films like uh, uh, Young, uh, Run, uh, and the other ones <laughs> <laughs> that you did the for those, those big companies. But did you find yourself being toned down from the stage? Was, was Richard Dreyfuss a wild, flamboyant stage man? Well, according to a reviewer in the Herald Examiner, who saw Dillinger and said... As you were Babyface Nelson. Babyface Nelson. The review was, uh, uh, the, oh, you can't tell one gang member apart from another, except Richard Dreyfuss, who overdoes it as usual, <laughs> <laughs> playing Babyface Nelson as a rabid pug dog. That was a great review I got. I really can't say yet. I haven't done enough film work. Sometimes I've been toned down, and sometimes... I mean, I, Kurt Henderson is a very low-key performance, but I was... that was me. You've done a lot of television, though. What, what about the, going from medium? What, what about television acting? In all honesty, I can't yet see the difference. I just do it. I just do it. That's why I want to go to England, to train. Because I want to do classical theater, and I know that I just can't do Hamlet. <laughs> I want to do Hamlet, and I know I just can't get up and say, to be or not to be, that's a question, but it's just not in the mind. I can't. I have to really get myself in hand for that. And so far, at 26, all I've done is just done it. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Richard Dreyfus, acting, film, and theater, right after this. Richard Dreyfus is with us. Richard, what about your family and your success? Has it had a profound effect on the Dreyfus family? Uh, no. <laughs> Not at all? No, I mean, they're, they're happy. Everyone, my sister is very impressed, and my mother and father are impressed. Are you the only member of the family in theater, film? Yes. What my father is a lawyer. My mother is a lawyer's wife. You called your father a free-thinking man at one point. Why? Why a free-thinking man? He's a very inner-directed person. He is a very inner-directed man. And I admire him for it. He's got flaws. <laughs> but he, I admire him a great deal. Where is home? Where do you live when you're at home? I have a house. I own a house in uh, Silver Lake, which is a part of L.A. I live alone. I want to tell everybody that, that, you know, it's Tuesday night, and we're sitting here talking. And we have to, to let people know that you will be back on Thursday evening. And on Thursday evening, we're going to talk in detail about Duty Kravitz, Ted Kocha, the making of the film, Richard Dreyfuss's performance in the film, and we're going to have film clips. And I, I think we've... We've done about all we can, unless we do another show. But are, are you serious about, about Canada? I mean, do you really want to do something here, work-wise? Yes. yes. I eventually want to start a theater in Los Angeles of my own, and I want to do as much theater as possible. You and Diana Maddox would be a dynamite team. I'll call her when I get back. I wish you would, because, you know, I'll bet there are a lot of people in Canada who would, who would like to, Diana Maddox to know that she's being talked about at home, even though she may be in California doing what she's doing. I will and Rudy Solaris, and Guy Stockwell, and all of those other people. Richard, thank you again. Thank you. We'll be back Thursday night with Dodie Kravitz, Richard Dreyfus, and film. Good night.